Hey y'all, thank y'all for showing interest in the video. If you like it, please like and subscribe. Have a great rest of the day. Got some cool stuff going on up here. Yes. Okay, now this is a plain weave. There's no diagonal line, but there's a diagonal pattern. But this is what's called uh, puck lace. Say it again? Puck lace. Puck H U C K. Puck lace. Puck lace. This is got a diagonal on it. These have diagonals on it. Now this is a plain weave. It's got. It's actually plain. It's got. It's got uh, some twill here and some plain weave here. Uh -huh. And there's some canvas weave in here. The, the double here is canvas weave. How long have you been weaving? I've been weaving. I got my loom at home in '87. Oh wow! Okay. And you and you've made all this right here. And this right here. And this is and this is wool. And you've made all this. This right here. And you've made all these I made all this. on something similar to this? Uh, similar, uh, newer model, mine's a four shaft and this is a two shaft. Okay. And this right here is uh, woven flax, which is what you make that Right. Right. So I spun that. Okay. Wow. Now here's a dumb question. What's the difference between a two shaft and a four shaft? See these two things that go up and down here? This one has two on it, the other one has four. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Obviously, there's a difference with the pattern and all that stuff. Yes. The more complicated, the more shafts you have, the more complicated the pattern. Like oh gosh. Right here, this was done. This was done. On, uh, it uses six shafts. Oh my. Six shafts, but this has a. I use six shafts of the eight shafts. This is four shafts. Wow. Yeah. This is the stuff is four shafts, except for this. I just got a new A new to me Asian. And so, yeah. So I made a baby. The seat is really hard for a lady. See, Julie, when you're weaving, you want your feet parallel to the ground. Okay. But uh, guys have longer legs. So my thought is this was probably made for a man. And back in the day, men did most of the weaving. Really? There were more hmm. men weavers than there were women. That's crazy. I mean, I didn't know that actually. You know, that's. I mean, who would have thought? Yep. <laughs> it's, it's that's my thought that this was probably made for a man. All that cool jazz. during the summer, the looms were kept in the barn. Uh, they took them 
pot kept in the box because they didn't have room for it in the house unnecessarily. So, uh, and they had too much going on during the spring, summer, and fall to be weaving. Most of the weaving was done during the winter. This is referred to as a plain weave. It's a two shaft loom. I am throwing the shuttle, uh, and this is the wet thread. From front to back is referred to as the warp threads. Uh, most of the clothing of the period was done in a plain weaves. If you'll note, my linen jacket, uh, short gown, my petticoat, and my apron are all a plain weave. So a plain weave uh, is what most of like your shirts, not all shirts, but they are knit. Uh, woven shirts are mostly plain weaves. So I've got uh, about 270 threads, 370 threads warped onto the loom. You have to uh, determine how long the project, what project you're going to do, how much yarn you need for them. And then I have about four and a half yards wrapped on the on the beam. In order to measure and count, you use that warping mill, that vertical warping mill. It's got the, you see the thread going through it? You start at the bottom, at the bottom and it rotates, and you turn. What you do is you start with your threads down here at the bottom, and then you just rotate here with a measured length up to the top. This is probably about four and a half. Each one of these is about a yard. So I've got one, two, three, four, plus or minus, so about four and a half yards. You make the cross up here, and then you rotate back again. And you count that for 370 times. Yes. So. Do you get confused as your number? Well, as, as you count, and as you go through and count them, you'll tie them in groups of, say, for that right there, that's a, uh, the read is seven dance, which means I can get 14, 14, I have it set up for 14 threads per inch. So I would group them in, in groups of 14, tie them up, and then I would cut, t count the groups. And that's, that's the easy way to keep track of it. And you may not do all 370 on one time. You might do a hunt, well this right here, you might do 200, and then take that off, and then to, do the, the, the remaining, uh, because it does tend to fill up. And when you when you finish warping it, you, you carefully take it off from the bottom in a chain form. So this keeps it from being tangled and keeps all the threads in order. So this is a, a chain warp ready to put on the loom when this one's finished. So once you finish over here, then you can take this here. And you know how chains work. You just find the end thread and then it just pulls apart. So you keep that there so it doesn't pull apart till you're ready. Then you bring it over here, and you put it onto the back beam here, the back walking beam. You spread it across there, and under tension, you wind it onto the back beam. So it's a slow process. You still need two people to help you do this. One to wind the back, and one to hold the yarn in front. And then when after you've got it wind, wound on, you, you thread each individual petal. And I do the back one and the front one, the back one, the front one, the back one, the front one, the back one, the front one. That's that's the, the pattern for this. And then this is the weed. The weed, uh, those back in that time, if you look over here, was actually made of weed. That's now, but this is actually weed. And that's Reeds. where the name came from. The weed. It was used to make that. Weed. Uh, this right here is a metal one. So it's uh, it's... It's not as fragile. So, threading this weed is referred to as slaying the weed. So, once you finish, you slay the weed, you tie it on to this beam here, to the front beam, wind it on, then you put it under tension. That advances, and then this is the gear that keeps it under tension. And now you can start weaving. So, it took me, generally, it takes me a day to, to wind a warp, a day to put it on. The, the loom, set up the loom, and then you can start with weaving the third day.
And how long does it take you to make? Well, it depends on what you're making. Uh, these tablecloths over here, I made this in about an hour. After you, after you have everything set up. This was on the four chef and the two chef. And you made this? Yeah. I made everything here. Do you have a shop? No, I do this because I love it. <laughs> no, I, well, because it's a lady that, that has a shop so in Salisbury that does looms and she, oh. if I'm not mistaken, it's what I read in the paper. Okay, so I'll have to look her up. Yes, you're welcome to pick these up. And, and then this right here in the back room, uh, she's doing spinning, but I spun this. This is the flax plant that we processed. I spun this flax and the flax, and when you weave it, you have linen. So typical of the time, they would either be weaving, this is wool, they'd either be using wool or flax when they were weaving at the time. Cotton didn't come around until the, the late 1700s and more prominent uh, in the 1800s after the McCormick Swift or the cotton. So if you made this, do you yes. have to do this by hand? Or? 